interesting day to say the least ladies and gentlemen bitcoin makes a nice little reversal to the upside the zones were taken now we've had a little bit of a madness in the marketplace today s p takes an absolute nosedive nasdaq too dixie just kept on moving up and then out of nowhere everything reverses microsoft has exceeded its estimates google the same thing you think that the market's all good. I mean, if Microsoft and Google are doing okay, happy days. But we need to be very cautious about this flavor, ladies and gentlemen. The move's too fast. So if you've made money on the pump, pay yourselves. Otherwise, you're just going to be the liquidity that market maker attacks and hits your liquidations. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get with what's going on in the charts, man. Let's go. All right, then. Bitcoin. So let's take a trip down memory lane. And what have we got? Earlier on in the live stream, we were talking about the idea of Bitcoin showing the capacity to spike because market maker can see the liquidity was stacked inside of these zones. Now, we were expecting Bitcoin to try and break away from this area. And the idea is that the longer they stay in this cloud, you're waiting for the information. You're waiting to see the proof that they're getting ready to break higher. You do not run longs until you get above that cloud. Because had price gone into that cloud, which was the daily open, which we wanted, you would have been able to exploit a price opportunity, more importantly, a pattern that we talk about every single day. All right? So check this out. Going into BTC. Here is, ladies and gentlemen, the definition of rise, retrace, continuation to the upside. That's the flavor. That's what we were looking for today. They come back and they took our little red vector candle zone right here. They took the next zone and then they went and finalized in this area and got above the psychological high, even the 800 EMA on the 15 minute time frame. Quite an interesting story right there with Bitcoin. But what did they do? They came back and ate the liquidity. Now, I didn't refresh this. I last refreshed this at 10 o'clock this morning, UTC. And then we refreshed that bad boy and you can see they just literally just climbed all the way up and they attacked the liquidity. Now we've got a few more shorts opened at the $4.5 billion mark. Shorts opened at that point at 28,350. All right. So that's where the next bout of liquidity could be for Bitcoin at 28,350. Now let's just go back into the chart. 28,350. Where's that bad boy? That takes us towards this zone right there or thereabouts inside of this zone. All right. So mark off. That is the zone. That $4.5 billion worth of short liquidations is going to get tapped, all right? As long as they maintain this flavor. But guys, make sure you're taking some money off the table. There's no point in seeing the success of a move like this to only give it back. Why? All right? Now, we're going to be asking the question, where are we expecting Bitcoin to go next? Well, let's just look at the logic. They've got back up above the 800 EMA. That's important. We said it. This was the critical zone. If Bitcoin breaks beyond this zone, it's to the toilet. Dog shit. It's done. But it's now looking like it wants to try and come back up. Now we can start focusing on trading towards vectors. That would mean that this Bitcoin move could succeed towards this vector candle zone at the 29,600 region. Get yourself a good old Fibonacci, okay? Find the midpoint of this candle. And that, at most, is where you would expect Bitcoin to turn from. Because they've just confirmed that 800 EMA. They snap below it, and they come straight back up above. But this has been motivated by the marketplace. So it's important to understand what is actually going on. Okay? Now, a couple of articles that came out today saying stocks, bond yields sink as bank worries persist. So what do we mean by bank worries? Well, check this out. <laughs> First Republic takes an absolute shock to the downside, all right? This was, a while ago, around $230 a stock, a share, and it's just completely taken a nosedive to the downside. They missed estimates. Things ain't looking too good for this company, and that's got a few traders concerned. That's what led the sell-off earlier on today in the marketplace, all right? And it's being pushed across the board. Look, sharp sell-off in First Republic shares causes alarm in Washington. So Washington right now is rushing to try and make sure that the economy doesn't collapse. But on good news, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the housing market is about to bottom, all right? 
<laughs> close to bottoming that will help the US avoid a bad recession. So the actual economy is going to give us the soft landing, all right, not the Fed. Because right now, interest rates are still high, all right, 4.75, with the talks of another increase to bring interest rates to around 5%. It's still expensive. Mortgages are still high. So we've got to be very cautious about the information that they're rolling out to everyone, okay? So then we look at the chart and say, hold on a second, like, what, what, how do I make sense of that? Well, let's just go and have a look at what's been going on with other assets across the board so that we can make sense of Bitcoin's behavior, all right? Check this out. S&P. Go all the way down to the S&P itself. You can see they took an absolute nosedive and took back every single one of our levels that we labeled off today in the live stream. Happy days. And each of these are vector candle zone one, vector candle zone two, and a little vector candle zone down at the lows at 4,091. Happy days. But this has been a sharp reversal, okay? Now, if we just go over to Microsoft and Google, we're going to have an understanding of where they're likely to end up going into tomorrow. So this was the price they closed at, and they've now gapped up to around $108 a share. That's good news for Google. Comes back and finalizes this gap up here, guys. So that's very interesting. More importantly, Microsoft closed at 275 shot up all the way to $288 a share. Happy days. So what are we expecting in tomorrow's market? We're probably going to see price try and fill the gap. So that means a little bit of a movement lower to then see price continue back up again. But is the market ready for continued movement to the upside back into Bitcoin? Because if the market moves up, so does Bitcoin. And that's the problem that I've got. Because ultimately, Bitcoin just needs to do its own thing. I don't want Bitcoin to go down when the stock market goes down. I want Bitcoin to move up when Bitcoin just needs to move up. Simple as. But we're now looking at this very important zone on the one hour time frame, and you are seeing a collective of vectors. Or so what do we mean? Pay attention to this zone. Remember what we said earlier on about the 27,500 27, zone, the whole and half number principle. Where are the pushes? Are they building longs or are they building shorts? Okay, look at this. They built the longs, mark price lower, mark price lower, built the shorts, recovered those. And this area right here is what you call a green vector candle continuation zone, all right? That means that price has come back into the vector candle region, stopping volume candle right there with the red vector candle, and then they shift out to the upside, all right? A trick to trading this sort of, these stopping volume candles is where you see them appear right here. You see that stopping volume candle? That zone right there is when the market spikes up, hits the liquidity, instantly pulls it back, okay? You can probably assume that when price is doing that, after it's been basing out like this, there is a high probability that they're going to come back into that vector. So you would initially run along inside of that zone with the idea of price continuing back up. It doesn't always give you a green vector, but price always ends up following the narrative and continues up based on the way they've been behaving. All right. So now that we have an understanding that Bitcoin's moved to the upside, was successful, happy days, where do we expect Bitcoin to go now? All right then. So going into tonight, Asia's going to get wind of the positive outcome by Google and Microsoft. So for the short term, Bitcoin could sustain this move even further, but we need to go into the smaller time frames to understand the idea of what would we need to see if price is going to start breaking down. All right, check this out. The 50 EMA is all the way down there. That's no good. We want price to get as soon as possible towards the 50 to understand if we're going to see higher prices. Why? Because we've got volatility now. We've got an imbalance in the chart. Price has moved away from the 50 EMA. That principally assumes that we're going to expect price to come back into the 50. But as long as price stays up here, the moving average in principle on the five minute time frame will get closer and closer to price and then marry up to it. And then that way, that is where we would effectively have the next setup for the chart. Why? Because we'll be focusing on the cloud. Yeah. Let's go into the 10 minute time frame. Show you the cloud from earlier on today. Check this out. They were trading flat. No opportunity. They broke above the cloud. First green vector candle above the 50 EMA. Happy days. Shift out to the upside. You would have been able to exploit longs inside of this zone because they didn't do what? They didn't invalidate the cloud, all right? 
so important. You can look at it in terms of hindsight. You can say to yourself, okay, then what was going on here? Well, if you were waiting for price to continue back up and trading back into the logic of this vector candle wick right there, you're saying, right, price is still above the 50 EMA candle, um, cloud. I've got no interest to worry about price going any lower. And then, of course, as it gets closer towards that point, you see it rejects it with the confluence of the daily open shift to the upside. Happy days. Did anyone take the long? That's the question. Did any of you take the long? That's that's what I really want to know. Give me a hey, yeah, give me a hey or whatever. All right, then. Cool. Now, let's go into look at other assets to make sense of this madness. Euro. Euro has been doing great to hold out inside of this zone. Very interesting price action with Euro. Given that it's taken and completely recovered all of its move to the upside, straight back down to the downside, and came back into this area. We've got a bit of a volume profile zone right here. We've got the value area low down at the lows here, but there's a lot of activity happening inside of this zone. We zoom out and look on the higher time frames, and you can see that Euro does have a blue vector candle region right here that we've got to be careful of. So just keep an eye out on Euro. Going into oil, I saw your comment, bro. Now, oil... Come back into the vectors. It's done. Like, it rolls back in. Now we're looking to see if oil can come back up into this zone because oil will go up when the value of the dollar goes down, which then gives me the insight that we could assume that if dollar dominance continues with this move, then we're at top side, we would expect it to end up right here. Now, dollar is closed. Euro is open. So euro is going to have a little bit of flavor up until about one, two o'clock in UK time. All right. Two o'clock in the morning before the dollar dominance chart actually opens up again or the futures markets. OK, we've got these vector candles right here that we need to be careful of. But the strength of the dollar has forced traders to seek the treasuries. OK, so we go into the treasury market. Look at that. Investors are seeking the safety of the government bonds. All right. But at the same time, when bonds are going up, assets across the board will be going higher. So are they really seeking safety or is risk appetite now step back in? That's the question. All right. The yields have taken a nosedive. Look at that. Four year, two year um, yields market down below at 3.9%. And what did we say quite a while ago? You really want to be picking up stock around the 4% mark or below. The lower it is below 4%, happy days. The 10 year yield itself, look going down. We need the yields to collapse. That's what we want. We want yields to just drop down, which would then suggest that people are picking up government bonds, which is what's going to force naturally asset prices to move higher because government bonds are made up of what? Stocks, Forex, commodities, you name it. Bitcoin, maybe. Who knows? Let's go into the NASDAQ for a split second and then we'll start looking at some altcoins. Right. So what have we got? NASDAQ comes back down, recovers the vector candles. Cool. But there's been a lot of pressure in the marketplace. So just be careful with this move to the upside with NASDAQ and S&P. They could look like they might come back down and recover ever so slightly. There's a lot to prove with this move, guys. And if they can hold this range, then the market is just buoying off the idea of what's going on economically across the board because the economy is fucked. That's the truth. All right. The U.S. debt ceiling has been increased. Look to get increased. So from what? 31.5 trillion. Now they're going to increase it about 1.5 trillion more. All right. Cool. Happy days. Problem solved. But how long is that going to be sustained for? That's the question. Going into Ethereum. Look at that bad boy, man. Look at that. Comes back into the red vector candle region right there, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't really gain that much ground, to be honest with you. All right. But Bitcoin saw the flavor with the Bitcoin dominance at around, yeah, 0.6%. So it's not that great anyway. But Ethereum comes out and gives us the move to the upside. Now, we've got a bit of a resistance with Ethereum. Look at the psychological high and then look at the 800 EMA on the one hour time frame. It's at a critical point. If this move was designed to just grab the liquidity to the upside, then we're going to be expecting price to drop. So check this out. You've got Bitcoin liquidations. Look at that. Everyone has gone long on Bitcoin. Here we go. At the highest point, $47 million worth of longs opened at 28208 Go even lower, 21209 uh, $21, Okay, 29 My days. 21 million, man. Shit. But there is a collective of people buying up. Now, people are going to keep on shorting. That's why, in principle, people will still keep on rising prices. So market will keep on rising up because people are not in acceptance that Bitcoin can be at this point. All right. 
So be careful trying to run shorts in these areas because market makers got traders interested to go long at the highest point, which leads me over to the next one. Bookmap. Yeah. <laughs> This bad boy right here gave us the heads up around the VWAP. As long as they could maintain the VWAP, then they would be working their way even higher. Now, we've got ourselves some interesting levels on the v, um, on the actual book map. Check this out. You've got some liquidity at 28,500, which sits with 843 Bitcoin orders. And the book is not in balance just yet. But we want to see if you saw there, it says minus 11%. That means that sell orders are being picked up. That's good news because that means price is going to continue higher. But I am recommending that you trade very cautiously running longs on this. Don't fall on for the hype. That Bitcoin is just going to shoot all the way up. There will be a little bit of a retrace. All right. So just wait for a bit of a retrace in the charts and then you'll be a little bit more comfortable knowing that the move has been sustained to the upside. All right. Keep an eye out on the 15 minute time frame. Look at this. Look at this area here. This is the 28,196, okay? This is the 800 EMA. If they can't hold this point, they're going to come down and recover some of the vectors. How much of the vector is going to be all decided on whether the same guys that were long here or Mr. Market Maker, if he starts running his longs in this area, price will naturally start moving away from that point, okay? And that's what's, man, I am working up a sweat. Anybody hot in here? Man, because I am. Anyways, let's have a look at XRP. XRP looking like it wants to break down now. All right, blue vector candles coming into place. Volume sort of dropping as it's going to the highest point. It is consistent with the climatic play. All right, but we're waiting for the market in principle to just start pulling back. That's what I want to see it do. Pull back before Hong Kong opens and the Asian session fully is in play. Now, gold. Gold does well, comes back up into the 1995 zone, comes back into the vector candles, trading towards vectors. Look at that red vector candle region right there. They come back and recovered that area. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that investors are seeking the safety of gold at the same time. All right. So will gold top out in this range or are we going to see gold coming up and taking a very critical point? I'm waiting for this area here, 2012, to be broken because then that will lead the flush of liquidity to the upside, retrace continuation up because that's where the vector candles will reside, okay? Now, going into Solana. Solana's done well. It's coming back up, okay? We're waiting to see if Solana's creating a cyclical move to the downside. Now, we really need to see Solana get above the 800 EMA, and if it can't get above the 800 EMA, it's done for Solana. That's the truth. All right. It's a very important point in the chart. So wait and see how it behaves around this area. And if it rejects this zone, then we're probably going to see Solana come back down and recover the vector candles and then probably work their way towards the $20 mark. All right. Cool. Moving on from that, let's have a look at waves. I like waves because it trades really well. OK, now we've got vector candle zone right here. We've got a vector candle region here. And we've got a top side vector candle region right there. So we've got all this pool of liquidity that they could actually attack. As long as it can work its way away from the psychological ranges that you can see right here, happy days. That's what we want. We want to see it break away from that zone because every zone that they work their way back to is a potential area that they can sell from. That's why when you're trading towards vectors, it's so important that you're paying attention to how they're behaving at around the last point of a red vector candle. So you see price here, that zone, Look at what they did. They moved up towards it, sold away from it. Now they've come back up into that zone. And there's that red vector candle region right there. So principally, you would assume that they're going to sell off from that point. But if they don't break down on the moving averages and they don't actually collapse below the 50 EMA on the five minute time frame, then your bias in principle is to see higher prices. You're looking for movement, man. It's not about the price. It's about the movement. And that's what you want to be focusing on. OK, pound, tricky, man. Pound is is tricky. And they said it today that people in the UK are a little bit more poorer. <laughs> what a story. Can you believe that? Where's the article? Check this out. Look at this bad boy. There you go. Bank of England chief economist says Britons need to accept they're worse off. And that's only because of the, the cost of electricity and gas. They solve that problem. Happy days. 
Now, Pound itself looks like it's creating what we understand to be this cyclical move. So we've got the recovery back up to the vector zones and they've aggressively rejected that region. I would expect them to try and bring it back up again, but it all depends on what happens in Asia tonight, okay? Now, let's just go into AMC today. AMC did really well, closes the gap in that range. And we've got this red vector candle, which I would expect them to try and attack later on in the markets tomorrow. We're going into tomorrow and we have... This is big, right? We've got core durable goods orders and durable goods orders month on month. Now, it's not a massive market mover, but the market will react to this, okay? Now, it's really Thursday because you've got the unemployment claim. So whatever's happening now in the charts is being set up for that data. That's the truth, okay? Going into more information, what else have we got? The volatility index. Now, look, remember what I said. When this bad boy... We said it on Saturday, no, no, Monday night. Yeah, Monday night in an area for reversals. And they've shifted back up towards that 18 mark, okay? If this thing keeps moving up, everything's coming down. So get on your charts and make sure you're paying attention to the volatility index. This thing goes up, assets go down. When this thing goes down, assets go up. We're at a point of complacency in the marketplace. That's why at 18... We're expecting reversals from this point to get above the 20. The best time to buy stock is when it's above 30, all right? Because in the history of time, the volatility index has always seemed to move from these zones, okay? Look at this. <laughs> what a perfect time to buy stock when it was all the way up there. That was when, what, what, what was it? COVID. Look at how mad that was. Everyone was shit scared. And that was the best time to buy because then that started the biggest rally in the market. All right, since 2020. So look at where we are right now at 18. So we've not got the fear in the marketplace. People aren't absorbing the fact that the economy is doing shit in the US and in the world. All right, interest rates are so high. Mortgages ain't being picked up. People are withdrawing money from banks, putting it elsewhere. All these small banks are going to start struggling soon. What, when's it going to give? That's the question, all right? 30 minute, let's go back into a little bit more price action. Give me some of your coins, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a look at some of your coins and we'll put things into perspective, right? 30 minute time frame, green vector candle. Thing is, volume is rising as it's moving up. It's a climatic candle. So there is still interest in this area. So just keep an eye out on Bitcoin's price action going into this evening, okay? Now, what have you got? Um, Matic, let's have a look at Matic. Happy days, cool. So Matic coming back up into that $1.02 zone. It's a nice play, but remember the marketplace is tricky, okay? So a stop run to the upside might actually end up reversing price back down again. So keep an eye out on how it behaves around the psychological ranges. Again, use your moving averages, okay? What else have we got? Crow, let's have a look at Crow. Um, yeah, okay, we'll have a look at that bad boy. Okay, maybe not. Crow, yeah, let's do that one. All right, him. Six cents. Big spike, come back down. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Big move up, retrace back down. Altcoins will do that, all right? So if you experience a sharp move in an altcoin, take the money and run because there's a good chance it's going to sell off and come back down to the moving average. This is what you want to see Bitcoin doing on the, on, on the five-minute time frame. You want the 50 EMA like that, because now you've got a cloud that you can see price moving away from. And if it can't hold above this zone, there's a good chance it's going to start working its way and finding resistances inside of this cloud to start working back into the vector candle region like so. Altcoins are treacherous for that, so just be mindful of that. What else have you got? Let's have a look at Gala. My guy wants Gala. How many likes we got in here? 300 likes, man. Come on, man. And we're bringing you flavor tonight, man. Gala. Three cents above the 800 EMAs. Had to travel quite a bit. But it looks like a promise that they may finalize at the psychological low. So just keep an eye out on this region. It's doing well and altcoins will move fast. So make sure you're taking some money off the table. You want the 50 to get close to the actual price point itself. So just be mindful of that, okay? What else you got? Um, RNDR. I know this bad boy. 
Look at that. This is a classic example. Watch this. You can see with the spikes up, yeah? What my goal is, guys, is to try and get an awareness for you so that when you see moves like this, you're not ecstatic unless you're in a trade and you've got profit and you can take it, happy days. But I want to try and get the idea across to you about the behavior when they spike these zones. Is it going to grant another attempt? All right? Because you've got to say to yourself, hold on a second. Price has been doing this, spiking up, right? And it hasn't actually broken down. I can only assume it's going to start working its way back up. So you take the trade. You place a stop outside the structure. You don't put it inside there because you want to keep your risk management tight. Don't use too much leverage and you'll have the flexibility to put a liquidation point of about seven cents. All right. Or 95 cents. Like a zone that it will take a long time for it to get to. Okay. Always put it outside of the last point that they moved away from. Because then that way you protect yourself from getting hit in a liquidation. And you then have the opportunity to change direction if it looks like it's going to continue in that direction as well. All right. FET, FET USDT, bang, 30 cents, happy days, mad that is, that projection came in nice, did take a little bit of a while, but now again, psychological range, they're coming back into the same zone that they sold from, so here's a little bit of a test for you, go and find any altcoin, and look and see if you've downloaded the hybrid system. And if you are new to the channel, check out tradersreality.com where you can download the hybrid system free of charge. It's a tab that says start here and just follow the steps and it will walk you through on how to get this installed on TradingView. But look at how they come back into the hybrid psychological ranges there. That's the last point they sold from. OK, we're back at that point. Look at where they are. Bang, drop down. Now it's trying to come back up. So it looks like there's interest in that area, all right? But just be very careful because the move is extended too much. It's a fast play. Naturally, fast move up, fast move down. And that's what I'm trying to get you guys aware of, okay? Bitcoin is now still starting to climb up. What else you got for me? XLM. Let's have a look at XLM. I like a good old XLM. Stellar coming down. 10-minute chart. Can't even hit the 800 EMA. Yeah, that's a bit of a situation for us. Might not actually succeed the 800 EMA, but just be careful picking up longs from here. You don't, quite frankly, you don't go long. That is, look, that is evident right here, okay? Let these guys go long. You sell into these guys, all right? You don't buy when people are going long. No way. You, don't, you do not go long when price is shooting up, all right? Now, if you're looking at it from a daily perspective, it's a different story, okay? Look at the daily time frame. We can logically assume that Bitcoin holding this zone is going to come up into the vector candle zone. Happy days. That's what we want to see. We want to see that region getting taken. We need proof. It needs to get above the 50 EMA cloud on the daily, okay? Well, XLM, but that's yeah, Bitcoin, but whatever. Anyway, there you go. Now it's above completely the cloud on the daily, so that's good news for us. We want that. It's going to suggest to us that Bitcoin can actually try and make the way. But remember, we're going into Asia where retraces could actually happen in the chart. OK, now, with that being said, I just want to go over to the USD JPY because dollar yen ain't breaking down and it ain't moving up. And I don't like this. All right, because dollar yen sort of given us the heads up that it might actually continue higher if the dollar dominance continues. OK. So we're going to know tonight in the Asian session. What's this? Um, theta. One more. Theta USDT. Okay, cool. Theta, man. Looks trades great. Again, resistances currently coming into the play. Psychological high with the 200 EMA and the 800 EMA. This is where people will buy. Okay? That's where they will buy. But remember, we'll be going into vectors where they could sell from. So you really want to see price retest the moving average to continue back up. And that's on the one hour time frame. You go to the 10 minute time frame. It's going to paint a different story for you. 800 EMA. You really want the 50 to get closer and closer to price. My advice to you is this, guys. Don't open no trades from now until Asia opens. Simple. Because then you've got a proper market open and that's what you want. 
You don't want to be trading now because the market's going to be choppy. It's going to be tricky. It's going to spike up. It's going to spike down. You're going to get all fucked up and your liquidations might get hit. And then when you actually come to the charts after you've lost a ton of money, the actual move that you originally wanted to take ended up playing in your favor. Had you waited for the Hong Kong session to open, which will be in just shy of about a couple of hours time. All right. You've got a new daily candle opening on Bitcoin very shortly. Where we at? We've got two hours time. Can you wait two hours? Like, really, can you wait two hours? Because the start of a new two hour can um, new daily candle, we should see Bitcoin try and come up and recover this wick. If this move has got the capacity to continue. All right. Now's not a time to run longs. And you know what? Even if Bitcoin does continue even high, and you say, oh, Tina, you said that Bitcoin, all that stuff. Well, look. I'm giving you the best chances of a trade going in your favor by waiting for a little bit of a retrace because psychologically, everyone's now feeling like they're missing out. What a perfect time. Now, Bitcoin could actually spike and then come down. All right. But if you're already in longs, how many of you actually are running longs? Can you please tell me? Can you type one? I've actually asked a question today in the... Here we go. Who went long in New York? And it says 41% of you who voted said yes, and 59% of you said no. I would assume that you guys were running shorts. Would that be correct? Say you're in a short right now. What have you got to be careful of? Well, let's look at it like this, okay? If you're running a short on Bitcoin, you, in principle, will be running shorts from every vector candle region, okay? Because the principle says that every time Bitcoin or an asset comes back to a red vector candle region, okay, so something like this, that's where we would expect it to sell off from, all right? If they can continue, then that shows us the strength that the market maker who went long here is now making a return. He's then going to send price beyond that range and then reverse it. But the ideal thing is that if you're running shorts, okay, the shorts have to be done as a progressive thing. This move is not progressive for Bitcoin. It's fast, all right? So it's a shakeout on all the guys that were previously short. And they're paying the price right now. And we know that the liquidity is there for them to take. And if people keep on running shorts, you're going to get charged. Market maker's going to be doing that backhand slap up across the face. And you're going to be left there with your mouth wide open saying, shit. You know, <laughs> moving on from that, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of news right now. Binance US calls off $1.3 billion deal for Voyager's assets. Man, these guys need to get their balance sheets in check. All right. And of course, Bybit, KYC. How many of you use Bybit? And what you what, what's the alternative? What are you guys going to? Apparently, Femex is, um, doesn't need KYC. So just, you know. Take advantage of your of the opportunity to get your money out and go elsewhere. I think Bybit is already anticipating that's going to happen. But now I think people are just going to go and buy Bitcoin because it's pumping up. All right. So moving from that, guys, I just want to quickly show you one more thing. I've said that twice. Look, there's still a bit more liquidity to have. $4.6 billion worth of short liquidations at 28350 this is a turn point, all right? So just be careful. 28,350 is the next point of interest for Bitcoin to do something, all right? Let me just mark that off. There it is. Fair four and six. Yeah, something like that. It's going to take it, man. It's going to eat that, all right? It's going to take that zone. It's just moving too fast for my liking. Got to be careful, okay? Cool. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that puts things into perspective for you. Tomorrow, the New York live stream, as usual, we are going to find key levels and anticipate specific movement in the chart, okay? Again, wait for Hong Kong to open. Because if you're not, you're going to be caught up in some wild price action and you improve the odds of your trade playing in your favor when the markets are fully open. Have yourself... A wonderful evening. Mad love and respect. Get the likes up. And if you are new, subscribe to the channel, man. This is where I start elevating my tone. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm out. Peace.